Hello everyone and welcome to episode 82 of Two Left Thumbs, your source of weekly gaming news and updates. In this week's episode we'll be talking about inside Xbox announcements and everything that happened there, or didn't happen, PlayStation Studios, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remasters on the way, Steam summer sales dates have been discovered, and what is to be seen at Sony's state of play this week, I think, this week. We also have all the best weekly deals from a range of publishers across all gaming platforms. Housekeeping first, as always. Guys, if you're listening, if you enjoy your thing, share the podcast, rate us on your podcast platform of choice, all that jazz helps us grow, get to more ears, which is always fantastic. Now, this week is a bit of an odd one. Uh, Gray was Gray was sick this week. He's um he's down with the man flu, and so in his place, our wonderful guest Stormy has decided to join us, affectionately known as the Ring In. Yes, you you <laughs> um you may have seen Stormy if you've watched us live or caught the YouTube videos at all. He's um, normally in the chat, talking some shit. He's there, being a smart ass. But he's here. We've got him on. We're gonna put, we're gonna make him put his money where his mouth is now. Um, so yeah, as always, I'm Dev Puppies. Hi, hello, Stormy. How are you? Ah, <laughs> oh, not bad. How about yourself? Yeah, good. Um, bit of a bit of a wild start to the, the cast. Um, my dog decided to. Have a have a moment before we went live and collapsed on the floor. He's fine now though. He's okay. He just went weird. Uh, <laughs> puppies having puppies problems. Yeah, puppies with puppies problems, which is fantastic. So, for the people that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. I like long walks on the beach. No, wait, that's wrong script. Um, no, I I play a lot of PC games. I don't tend to play a lot of console games anymore. Um, I, I put up with some console games occasionally uh, when, when I'm watching them. Used to be really right into the Xbox uh, kind of situation, uh, landscape, that kind of thing. But yeah, now now I'm full PC Master Race. Fully converted. Um, so yourself, you, um, you stream as well. Do you want to plug your shit? Tell us all about that, what you do there in, in, in the content creation platform of wonderfulness. So my, my content creation uh, space is all, all I'm really trying to do is I'm just trying to give strategy gaming a little bit of love because, I mean, I play in my free time pretty much everything, but I get a little frustrated when out there in streamer land and YouTube bill and all of those places, there's never enough strategy gaming content. If I feel compared to the number of people that play it, it's horribly, horribly underrepresented. And so I'm just trying to give it a place to shine. Cool, cool. Um, so we obviously that's what we've that's that's the how and why. What have you been playing recently? What's been what's been tickling that itch? Um well you know, but probably some of your listeners won't know, that I tend to switch games quite a lot. So because I anticipated you might ask this question, I did uh, have a little <laughs> I did have a little look at uh, how, how many games I've played in the last week on um, on Steam. Uh, want to guess how many it was? Knowing you, it's at least in double digits, so I'm going to go with about 20. Yep. Uh, I can't claim that many. It was Not only 14. Oh, 14. It was only close. 14. Um, so we've got a, a good selection of little bits and pieces there. We've got some um, turn-based strategy games like uh, Total War Three Kingdoms. We've got some Civ Five. Uh, got some traditional RTSs like Halo Wars, a brand new one that's coming out in September called Iron Harvest. Um, that, that was really good. Streamed that one. Um, some tower defense games, uh, like Mars Tactical Base Defense. Then I've been, as some of your viewers, your regular stream viewers would know, I've been playing some Generation Zero with you. I've also done some Borderlands Game of the Year just to round out the different genres. So, yeah, been a bit, good, into a bit of everything. Good eclectic week. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, so, myself, because I have no one to deflect this onto, so we're going to do the most awkward segue ever. I've, um, I've been playing Gen Zero, I've been banging my head against Gears a lot more. Fucking, that spider monster nearly ruined me, especially when you get half or three quarters of the way through the mission, and you fail. So, you're, all right, you go to the checkpoint, you click on the wrong thing, and you restart the entire level again. That, that Not was, fucking that cool. Was rather amusing, by the way. It, it 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 broke me in some very unspecial ways. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was I think the most frustrated I've been in a while. Um, but that's okay. So I took a break. I'm like, I'm just gonna just put you aside for a moment. I played some um, more Generation Zero with you, and then I played another game, which the name is escaping me right now. I can't remember. Can you remember what it was? Something. Uh, you're talking about the uh, sword. Sword run one night. Yes, yes. I can't find it. I, I need to find I, it. I, I need to talk about this. Um, but basically, the whole premise of this game is it's like this. It's got like Titanfall movement, but you have a samurai sword, and it is absolutely just so good. I need. To, I'm, I'm gonna just keep talking randomly. Because I'm terrible and my memory I'd, is I'd, failing I'd, I'd me. I'd love after. to fill it in for you, but I am actually only caught about the last five minutes of that one, so it didn't. Yeah, no. Um, on me. I need to find it, and I'm not going to awkwardly pause. I don't think Katana Zero was it? Katana? No, no it wasn't that Katana that Zero. Like it. No, it wasn't Katana Zero. It was I, something. I reckon. Like I reckon if someone's clever enough to. Um, Thank you, Kumi. With... You're you're an absolute lifesaver, that, Ghost Runner. That is the one. You absolutely. <laughs> Gumi's saving me in chat, you absolute legend. Um, so yeah, we, we played, um, I played Ghost Runner, and it was only, it's only a free demo at the point, at this point, but it's got lots of really cool movement, you can freeze time and kind of shift around the bullets, which is great, because otherwise they instantly kill you, and these, the NPCs are not stormtroopers. They are, if they don't hit you with their first shot, because you dodge it, they will follow up fast, and they will fuck you up really badly. But yeah, I think the I think the whole I think I played for like an hour. The whole level takes about fifteen minutes at a kind of regular pace to go through. Um, but it plays so fucking well, it's so good. I'm I'm really excited to see more of that. I think it's real. It's I don't think there was even a release date yet, but it's coming soon. But yeah, Ghost Runner, fantastic game, and you should definitely check it out. Now, on to arguably most people's favorite section of this podcast when we have a guest. Stormy, are you ready? No, f- f- never. F- for fast thumbs. <laughs> no. He's never ready. No one is can ever we, ready. Can we, can we defer this to like a week no. Friday? No, it happens now. Uh, all right, so here we go with fast thumbs. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh, telepathy, probably. What is your dream job? I'm already doing my own job. I'm a, I'm a financial planner, dude. I love the numbers. What is your favorite quote from a game? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I really enjoy just the set pace it gives you when you just get that m- meaty voice of Master, Ch- Master Chief and the Captain Keys at the start of Halo, Mas- uh, uh, the first one. Combat, he uh, literally, co- combat evolved. Yeah. He literally just goes, Captain Key. <laughs> Game of the year this year. Uh, no doubt something that I haven't played and probably won't play until two years from now because the stuff that tends to win that award uh, is not really the stuff I play as a new release. Um, I don't know. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima has been in the news a lot. Let's go with that. All right. First console. Uh, Super NES. Um, I think I've still got it somewhere, actually. Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook? Okay, so I'm obviously supposed to pick Mixer. Um, it's definitely not Twitch or Facebook, um, but I do tend to watch a heck of a lot of YouTube as well. So yeah, no, I, feel that I, I think as, well. as, a, as a creator, Mixer, as a viewer, maybe YouTube? Cool. Inverted controller? Yeah, of course. Doesn't everyone play inverted? At least every, everyone I know, everyone I know. The one time we find one, when Grayson not here. 
<laughs> total war or civilization? Uh, that's really easy. That's total war. And not that they're both not good games. Um, problem with civilization is you're set, stuck in a set scenario. Total war, you've got 13, 14 games in different settings, uh, fantasy and historical. It's just way more broad. And also it has real-time stuff, which excites me. If you had to play one game forever, what would it be? I think I'm already well on the way to that. Uh, Crusader Kings 2. I was looking the other day. Uh, I've, I'm about to clock up 3,000 hours. So. Um, Jesus. Yes. What product would you refuse to promote on your channel? Um, well, pretty much any product. I don't really do. I don't really do monetization stuff. So, um, yeah. Favorite generation? Uh, do we have to go into this generation thing? This is a Just... console construct. But us PC gamers don't have generations. Fine. Unless you're talking <laughs> about like video card generations, maybe. <laughs> What is the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, I don't know. Uh, family family kind of tradition is we have well-cooked uh, fried lamb brains uh, on all the religious religious or public holidays. That, that's kind of, most people would find that weird, I think. Brains are great. I love brains. They're fantastic. What would you do with your 15 minutes of fame? Uh, despite thinking that that's probably not going to be a thing, um, again, pretty much just what I said at the start of the um, start of the uh, show. Just try and get some more love out there for, especially the smaller style strategy games. If a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be, and who would play you? Uh, probably one of those horrible biopics that no one actually goes to watch. Um, and it's probably I imagine it might be some, along the same lines as that Turing one the, the nerd the nerdy type character uh, so I, I'd, I'd love to say um, maybe that same guy that played Turing who was that? that was Benedict Cumberbatch wasn't it? possibly I have no idea I've never seen the movie one word to describe your gaming ability non-existent? Aspirational. <laughs> Aspirational, I like it. Optimistic. Best... Let's go with optimistic. <laughs> Best game played this year? Uh, well, I mean, I've played Crusader Kings 2 this year, so that's pretty much going to win every year. Do you want something that was actually released this year, do you? Something you've played this year, man. Uh, all right. How about... I'd probably go with uh, Broken Lines because that's the one I've enjoyed the most this year, probably which is the turn-based or but also real-time tactical game. Yes, I remember you, you playing that one. It was quite good. Um, PlayStation or Xbox? Uh, well, I haven't played a PlayStation in any meaningful volume since the first generation, uh, and most of the reason for that is the silly controllers that are horrible and not comfortable. So Xbox. If you were stranded on a deserted planet and could only take your body weight in three objects, what would they be? Wait, you said planet? Yes, planet. Well, crap. Because I don't think I'm going to get much rescue kit in my body weight. No. So, <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, are we going habitable planet? This is too hard. That's way too broad. Pick three things, you gotta do it. Quick. Clock's ticking. First three, th first um, three things that come to you. I guess, I guess a su survival kit, some kind of weapon, because I don't know how hostile the planet is, and some kind of shelter, I guess, if we're going to be there for a while, given it's another planet. Well done. That was your run through of the gauntlet of the fast thumbs. How are you feeling? Uh, I survived. I think we <laughs> choked a couple of questions there, but... That's fine. Uh, we're fine. We're all good. We're all good. All right, with that, I'm going to take a drink of water mid-sentence. You're welcome. We are going to move on to the deals and freebies for this week. So, 
Starting off with PlayStation, we have the rather controversial um, freebies this month of Cities Skylines and an old podcast favourite, Farming Simulator 19. On the PSN deals, we have Kingdom Come Deliverance for $18 and Far Cry 5 for $18. Both of them solid games. Had a lot of Kingdom fun with Far Cry 5. And I know you really enjoy Kingdom Come as I did as well. It is, is quite possibly the best RPG of the 2010s, just quietly. I, 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 I'd almost agree with you, make sure you there. Do. Yeah, definitely worth picking up. Because I don't think I've seen it come on um, special for PlayStation either. So... Get it where you can. Over in the Xbox camp this week, uh, Games with Gold this for this week are Knights of Pen and Paper Bundle. So that's Knights of Pen and Paper 1 and 2. V-Rally 4 and The Sensible World of Soccer. Sounds Sensible really World? Is that an actual that's game? It? That's that's the actual game. It's a, it's an old Xbox arcade game. It's like one of the old ones they kind of throw in with the side. It's fantastic. Um, yes, all these prices are in um, Australian as well, for those who are asking in the chat. Over on with Deals with Gold, we have Borderlands 3 for $30 and The Outer Worlds for $39. Both really games. I didn't. I don't like Borderlands, so that's that's on me, but Outer Worlds is fantastic. I know you've played a fair bit of Borderlands. That, that price for Borderlands is pretty good because I've had Borderlands on Wishlist on PC. Across all the stores, the cheapest I've seen it get to so far is 40 So that's a good, what, a quarter off what you can get it for so nice over on the switch this week we have saints rose 4 re-elected for 28 dollars and cooking simulator 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 for 18 Stim- over- stimulator simulator hello um over on the epic store this week we have death coming which is a non-linear game puzzle where you must harvest human souls final final destination style however pesky mortals are not your only problem as the agent agents of light will do everything they can do to stop you this game looks hilarious it's super animated and cartoony and it's you basically set up final final destination situations and just let them play out and there's like all these puzzles and physics involved with it, and it's and you see the screams of the little people as they get splattered into oblivion. It's amazing. So, so like uh, Hitman, except way less serious and top down, and like it's yeah, and it's not not yeah. So non-linear, you can go wherever you want in the map to set all these things up and just set up these massive chain reactions. It looks like an absolute blast. Right. Now, news and updates this week. We've we've got a, we've got a bit here. Um, a lot of it is just game announcements from Inside Xbox. So we will start with that. Um, so May's twenty May twenty twenty's Inside Xbox event has come and gone. Uh, while it did not deliver Xbox Series X new, or while while it did deliver, sorry, Xbox Series news and some gameplay, it kind of didn't turn out to what we were expecting. But um, here's what we saw. There was a gameplay trailer for Bright Memory Infinite, which is a first-person action game that emphasizes both fast-paced shooting and melee combat. It's kind of like a combination between Titanfall 2 and Devil Devil Great May Cry, especially closer to the 5 series, like the later ones. And it is brought to us by a single person, which was the most phenomenal thing about this, um, running under the studio of FYQD Studio. This game was pretty as hell. It had, like, ray tracing cranked the i think that there's a, there is a bright memory game out and the shooting in that is really good so i'm assuming the same kind of mechanics would be following on from there but it was very flashy there was lots of lots of rain happening and and lights everywhere and there was like there was a gun um there was like people being teleported from different times like there was like a, a like a samurai knight looking thing and then you like got into like a delorean and drove off it was really really cool you, you know this is sounding like just a typical uh looney tunes episode right just yeah, crazy, it always is it, always stuff going on it was everywhere. it was grounded and serious and raining and stuff you know <laughs> It was great, um, but it looked looked really promising. Um, it was definitely showcasing the what things could happen graphically. And it's always weird because when you're watching this stuff and they're like, "This is what this console can do," but you're kind of limited by streaming and um, like streaming and YouTube, um, kind of crunching everything down so it's viewable for most people. So you can't tell as much of the difference, but you can you can kind of see some of it there. 
Uh, the next game uh, bought up was Dirt 5. We had a trailer for that. It's off. Um, it's offering more diversity than previous games in the franchise, with a broader range of cars, race tracks, and a weather and a weather slash season conditions, and also boasting the ability to play at 4K and 60 FPS or 120 FPS. Being either, I think, still holding 4K was from what I read there. But it was. Yeah, it looked. Cool, static will love it. Oh, he will. Static will love it. Um, it looked very not like dirt. It looked a lot closer to kind of Forza Horizon. Like oh. aesthetic wise, it was very kind of bright and colourful and poppy. And they've got like um a few other um, a few bigger names in their voice acting as well. Um, don't ask me who because I can't remember them, and I should have put that. That down. that seems like a really odd kind of game to invest heavily on voice actors. I mean, maybe. I oh, know I've I've never really played the Dirt series myself, so it's um it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. But I mean, it's 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 a driving game, and those kind of driving games, it's going to come down to how how the driving handles and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have to see. But it looked it looked good, like it was pretty. Um, next off the bat, we had Scorn, which is an upcoming action adventure horror game. That seems to be inspired by the grotesque artistic skylines of H.R. Geiger. The game was designed around the idea of being thrown into a world you find yourself in a, like, a nightmarish world that is made up of several interconnected areas you can explore in any order you want as each one has its own self-contained story and theme that contributes to the overall narrative. So it's going to throw a lot of like Metroid-like elements in there. It was kind of gross looking. It was pretty good. Um... It was like this weird penis thing that came out of the wall and like went out and retracted and that became a whole thing later on. Oh, was that was that the thing that I've seen all over the internet everywhere? Yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. like it was it was really kind of I mean I noticed this with quite a few of the games too, that there was like a a, a more like darker theme, so like a kind of horror inspired theme throughout the whole thing. Um which was interesting. It was like we had like we had we had dirt which was kind of bright and colourful and funny, but the rest were kind of took this kind of darker turn with either be the story or the graphics or something so that was interesting to see what's coming out though there wasn't very many kind of younger there wasn't any like younger audience kind of third party titles there um it was all very very it was all very grown up uh next we had chorus which is a narrative focused space combat shooter where you play as an ex-cultist named nara who is an ace pilot who flies a sentient starfighter. Uh, the first trailer we saw showed some fast-paced ship combat and um, some interesting visual storytelling as well. So uh, kind of EverQuest-ish? No? Kind of. Maybe? More arcade I think, um, as far as... For full disclosure, um, I haven't watched yes, any of Stormy hasn't watched all this. Because... I'm, I'm trying to remember. Because, you know... Uh... This is all console stuff. Yeah, and we kind Sorry. of threw Stormy on my... I, I, I messaged Stormy, what was it, last night? I was like, hey, yeah. I, need, I need a guest. Come help. <laughs> You're it. Um, but yeah, it looked really cool. Um, the, the combat looked pretty tight as well from what we could see, which is nice. Um, and then we had um, Microsoft confirming EA is coming up with this next NFL Madden 21. Series X. Uh, I, this was I don't know hey like this was just like this it was like there was a like an evolution of gameplay of all the Madden series so far and then it just had I don't know it's sports ball it's I, I don't whatever but and then it had um some guy who's a big footballer sitting there on a couch talking about how excited he was for the game but we didn't really learn much about it it was just like talking about the game but it was just like it's coming to Xbox, and yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a great deal there. It went for unnecessarily long too. Um, and then we had um a little look at Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines Two. Uh, the new okay, trailer shows okay. all one sorts of one I recognize. All sorts of wonderfully horrific sights. Um, we had a guy dancing like the trailer played out and. Started out with a guy dancing in a room full of suspended corpses around a Christmas tree. Um, we saw some first-person vampire biting, um, lots of uh, vampiric supernatural powers as well. Um, and there's lots of looks at that. But it was, it gave me like this, 
this Bioshocky We Happy Few kind of vibe watching the trailer, which I really liked. Um, I haven't played Vampires of Masquerade, the first one. Um, maybe it's something I should get around to doing one day. I'll throw that on the backlog at some point. Have you have you played the first one? I haven't played the first one. The reason this one was on my radar is because this one's actually par- uh, published by Paradox. And so I saw their initial, I think it was the initial announce for it uh, at as part of PDXCon. So Paradox Interactive, the publisher, have their own their own conference in Germany. And so I remember the uh, launch trailer from that. So that's why I knew of that one. I liked it though. It looked it looked like the perfect amount of creepy. It was fantastic. Um, then we oh, had the, a... it's got it's got very very good it, a very loyal um, niche audience. The first yeah one. yeah definitely like one of those hyper 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 niche but really in crowd kind of deals. Yeah. Uh, next on the list we had Call of the Sea, which is a narrative focused adventure game where you play as Nora who is on a journey to find her missing husband on a remote island in the South Pacific during the 1930s. This is kind of very Firewatch-esque. I think it's done by the same guys, actually. Memory. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, we have The Ascent, which is a cyberpunk, a cyberpunk action RPG. You can play alone or with a friend with up to three others, either on local or online co-op. Uh, you play as a group of corporate fighters who must defend their district from rival corporations and crime syndicates. Oh, well, that one will be a filler game. Yeah, it, it was a bit of a filler game. Um, but it looked it looked cool. Like, it's very, I mean, it's cyberpunky, neon, bright. It was top-down-esque. Shooty-shooty. Also, call, call of the Sea. Can anyone else uh, immediately from that description um, go back to the Lara Croft reboot? You know, trudging around islands in the um, South Pacific. Oh yeah, looking for stuff. I don't think it's going to be that gritty though. No, <laughs> I have a feeling I, 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 it's going to be a little I very more much peaceful. hope not. I mean, although because I, I would did be watch cool. you play Firewatch, so I, I yeah. don't know where that one went. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was Firewatch was I really enjoyed that it was wild. Um, the next one in another another super creepy one was the Medium. Um, it's a psychological horror game from the guys that did Blair Witch and Observer, which is Bloober Team. Set in Portland in the late 80s, you play as Marianne, a spiritual medium who is haunted by the visions of a child's murder. So this is going to be like one of those Sherlock-esque find the clues, but it was like weird, like, the, like all the graphics are like hands coming out of pavements and dragging heads under and like really kind of gruesome. Now, now is it Portland or Poland? Poland, not Portland. Thank you. Um. Because, because, because that that makes a big difference. Because in it the does, late actually. 80s, Poland was still behind the Iron Curtain. So uh, yeah, there you go. Got, I can read. And it's got communism and stuff. So it'd be interesting to see if that plays. Into there you the go. Communism, horror, and supernatural themes. It's exactly what you want in a game. So it's perfect. Brilliant horror game. Next up, we had Scarlet Nexus, which is an upcoming action game from Bandai Namco Studios, led by the developers who worked on the Tales series. Puts you in the role of Utio Sumeragai, a psychokinetic trainee hoping to become an elite warrior. This, um, I was, yeah, I was, um, I was talking to someone in my Discord moment, Moltres, um, and other people have mentioned but it looks a lot like code like a lot like code vein so it's going to be well, running along those kind of themes yeah if something works you know you, it's probably the same source code but you know new skins all, right all, it's all, fine. all aboard the train to, to be honest though this was probably one of my favorite trailers to watch well, it was just of, of the, of the very fun and over the top through? yeah that's probably one of the most appealing ones just from the descriptions yeah, I think that was that was um that was a, that was a a bit of a um popular theme through this because when I was watching because I you know I got up at five I stayed up to like one to watch this and watching the chat this was kind of the most hyped up things got I uh, during this trailer because it did look really cool and really actiony and good um and then following that keeping along with the um keeping along with the theme, we had an announcement for Yakuza, Like a Dragon, is going to be coming to 
Xbox Series X. And this is the seventh in the series. Um, it's been steadily making its way to Xbox and PC, so it's only a matter of time before the latest entry came um, to be confirmed for the consoles as well. But this one looked really cool. Um, have you played any of these games at all? I, I've got a couple of them on wish list, but you know, unfortunately they've been... Every time Steam sales come around, uh, things keep jumping them in the order. So it's Probably something I had an eye on, but yeah, I can't offer any brilliant um, insights. Okay, and then we had we we had the final <laughs> the final trailer, and this had been uh, this was, it was it was Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and we um. Last last week, the week before when um, the, the the original announcement for Valhalla came out, so all right, next next week we're gonna see we're gonna see more, we're gonna see gameplay um, as 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 part of the inside Xbox um, for this month. So it was it was hyped up and there's a lot of hype going into it. And this is why I set up because I'm I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan, obviously. And I was like, right, this is good. I want to see some gameplay, see how the game plays out. And they showed us a gameplay trailer that had no fucking gameplay in it. Like, even, like, the people, the parts that people are saying they're fucking gameplay. It's, no, it was cinematic. It was in-engine, which looked cool, and the trailer was cool, but everyone was Playing expecting gameplay. Playing a cutscene from the game is still gameplay. No, it's not. It's not it gameplay. Is. It's not. It is totally not. They said, you're going to see gameplay. You're going to go, okay, righto. I'm oh. going to see people playing when, the game or the game the, being played. When, when you're watching the cutscene down on your couch or in front of your computer would and your wife comes past and she asks, what are you doing? Would you say, I'm playing a game? You would, wouldn't you? You wouldn't say, I'm watching a cutscene. It's not, I'm not playing. Well, technically, you're not playing the game. Also, my wife is a huge Assassin's Creed fan as well. She was mad. <laughs> So that situation doesn't quite stick, but um, this was this is a big sticking point for this whole this whole thing because um, even uh the lead developer on the game came out and said, "Whoops, sorry, we we kind of disappointed you here. Um, we've got more coming, but we're we're really Oop. sorry. We 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 realize where we fucked up here and we've we've let you down. Um, so they've acknowledged that, which is good. But I mean, I was I was really excited, and now I'm just sad about it." <laughs> And now I'd have to wait to see more gameplay. I mean, the trailer was cool, but it was, just, it was, yeah, it was just, it was. I'm, st I'm still, I'm still reeling about it, and it will take me weeks to get over. So we're gonna move on to the next bit of news, so I can try and forget in pain, which is the announcement of a PlayStation Studios. Now, Sony's announced a new PlayStation Studios brand that will be using for its first-party exclusives going forward in a way to let customers know that the games come from one of Sony's in-house development teams. Um, Sony's various studios already technically exist under the Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios organization, say that 10 times real fast, and gives Sony an easy way, and it gives Sony an easy way to differentiate its first party exclusives from microsoft so where microsoft has microsoft studios um we will now have playstation studios as well so that'll be just like playstation studios presents this studio making this game so it's just kind of here's our first party exclusives from our in-house developers that we own like insomniac um and stuff like that uh and that'll be that uh, it had like a, a Marvel Studios like op and opening animation uh, panned over the PlayStation face button icons, which is overlaid from characters from first party games like Uncharted, Little Big Planet, God of War, Ratchet Clank, Horizon Zero Dawn, and The Last of Us. No doubt, as newer games come in, they will change. But I liked it. It's it's good. They're kind of putting everything together, so it makes sense. I mean, if we go past the fact that the whole idea of exclusives is silly but other than that this is a good business and branding, branding yeah idea. exactly 100 yeah. percent. um yeah exclusive i mean exclusive sell consoles though that's the, that's of the course, thing of course and they do, but, they, but um, there's a there's a differentiation there but um yeah it, it was good it, it was nice and it's good they've got their own platform now it's solid uh, on to the next one, uh, we have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 
remasters have been announced. Um, announced by Tony Hawk himself, the first two to Tony Hawk Pro Skater games are getting remastered this September, according to a press release. Uh, the complete, uh, sorry, according to a press release, uh, the complete roster of original pro talent from the first two are showing up as I, and um, totally redone graphics. I think they're boasting 4K, all the usual buzzwords. I, I think 60 FPS might have been in there as well. I could be wrong. Um, but aside from that, it'll have um, an upgraded creator park and creator skater tools. A way to share the custom parks online and both local and multiplayer online modes. Uh, the two game collection will sell for $40 when it releases on September 4. But if you're looking to play it on PC, it's an epic exclusive. So just brace yourself for that. <sighs> Speaking of exclusives. <laughs> but people are really excited for this. I, I didn't play a lot of skater games when I was younger. So I don't remember them as much. Um, but they were always fun. Like you could just stick around to them and do tricks and shit. But I've I've yeah, seen I a lot of people. I don't think I owned them, but we back when video game uh, at rentals at like video stores were a thing. Uh, the Tony Hawk's games were one that got uh, rented quite a lot for our PlayStation. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I I don't think there's many people out there that. Well, of our age that didn't play them at least occasionally. It's one, yeah. It's one of those um, it's one of those staples that like at some point you have played this game, whether you remember it or not. <laughs> if you had a console of any kind, right. On to the next story, we have the Steam Summer Sale dates have been leaked. It's to literally no one's surprise. So the inevitable, the inevitable precursor we're always anticipated Steam Summer Sale has arrived. The part where folks tell you about the dates ahead of time and we go, yay, Steam Summer Sale. But according to all the folks behind the Steam database, they believe the big Summer Sale will return for two weeks from June 25th to July 9th. Usually that's the end of it and everyone marks the date. We wait for the store to sale to come up and we buy like all these games that we're going to add to our backlog and never play. However... So Valve is planned a little bit more this year. It appears that they are working on a loyalty program, and from what we've seen, if true, it involves Steam introducing a points system with points being collected and used for a number of digital rewards. Those rewards would include badge levels. There's also a possibility that Valve will allow points to be cashed in for discounts off games. So this one's one that I know and am probably qualified to talk on a little bit because, surprise, surprise, I buy a lot of games on Steam. Um, right. I also buy a lot of games off Steam too, just quietly. Um, so when the Steam Summer and Winter sales roll around every time, for those that don't know, there's usually some kind of gimmick attached. Like last last year it was, I last don't know, year was like a game race cars. Weird. Yeah. Race cars. You had, to, you had to choose your team and what have you. And you accumulated points via doing whatever the challenges were as part of the event, and you could cash those in for uh, discounts. However, reading this, it makes makes it sound like uh, Valve are looking at something kind of longer term. You, as with the summer and winter sales, you usually got kind of credits uh, for the purchases over the prior to six months, uh, but it wasn't a, a a large amount, and it wasn't something that was highly visible. You kind of just when the sale started, you got told that, oh, you've been given X amount of credits and that was it. You kind of didn't really know why unless you went digging into why it was because of the purchases you'd made over the last six months. So they've kind of had this before, but nothing formal. It looks like they're trying to take it kind of more formal, the big thing. Lots of the uh, third-party... Um, other uh, sites you can buy Steam codes from um, are across the out there, the ones that aren't super shady. Lots yeah. of them have these loyalty programs as well. So I, I think it's there's a fairly yeah, good we'll track be record long term yeah. here that'll yeah, like kind of beta good. test it for the future. Yeah, I think it, it, there's a lot of evidence that this this stuff works, and so why would they not include it? What what would you like to see implemented? As, as 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 our resident team expert right now, what would you like to see? Um, I, I I think what I what I'd really like to see is 
some in kind some kind of encouragement for what I'm thinking of mostly is for the fact that so many games are purchased. The parts of the Steam ecosystem that I don't like at the moment are people are able to buy huge volumes of games, um, very cheap. Like quite off, quite often, my threshold is often if it's not seventy five percent off, I'm not buying it, which is crazy. Um, and then they've also got the ability to turn around and refund them. So they're um, buying cheap games, potentially refunding them willy nilly. Um, I'd like to see some kind of encouragement to try and curb that behavior because it's really not fair on developers and publishers who yeah, are true, yeah. getting these sales at low low costs, low, low prices anyway. Um, and then when they reverse those sales, they're actually the developers and publishers are left out of pocket. Yeah, because it's costing them more they because to, of um, they commissions to, and stuff like that. Yeah, and all the all the fees that are charged on reversals. So what I I don't I. This is me being idealistic. I don't think um, Steam would be intending to um, address that because it's one of the selling points of the console. You get uh, of the platform. Sorry, you've got the the Steam sales. They're famous. Everybody knows they're famous. And the refund policy is a consumer protection. And if uh, there was anything uh, done to try and curb that or make it less powerful or de-emphasized that would be seen or perceived very horribly. So I don't imagine that it will be addressed, but that's what I'd like to see. Fair enough. You yeah, know, um, a good way to, like, yeah, like you said, some way, some way to kind of discourage, not, not so much stop, but discourage it, encourage people to keep the games for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, keep, keep, keep Maybe the Maybe if you return it, you lose a, a discount bonus off that I, I, or I, whatever. The way, I, the way I'd like to see it done, again, yeah. Even the fact they've announced it with a Steam sale makes me very skeptical that this is what's going to happen. But I'd like to see additional points um, or whatever they're doing assigned if you're purchasing the price at maybe more than more than fifty percent of its actual retail value. So if you're getting something eighty percent off, you get barely any other points. Whereas if you buy it closer to retail price, you get more. Okay. Yeah. Right. I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Um... Interesting. Let's see what happens. Um, we'll find out next month. Next month? Hmm. What month is it, mate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next month. Yeah, it, the <laughs> sale will be about a month away. Yes. Just screw what day it is. I can't figure out what month it is. So it's off to a good start. Check check um, your phone. It has it. It has it. Like on, it does. On the screen. But it's it's like arms that, reach away. It's that, like it's that's there. kind of something that's really bugged me through this whole coronavirus thing. All the people go, oh, I don't know what day it is. Check your phone. It's like written right <laughs> there in front of you. You're staring at probably, it, damn it. And you're probably spending about half your day attached to your phone. So, yeah. On to our final story of the night. We have um, the Sony set of play is coming up on Friday, which is two days, two days from now. Um, so we've got a little bit more information about that. It's um, not going to contain any new information about the PlayStation 5 at all, um, but what we will be seeing is a lot more Ghost of Tsushima. This is essentially going to be dedicated just to this game, this state of play. Um, the whole broadcast is going to run for about eight minutes, uh, according to the PlayStation blog, and will focus primarily on the game's exploration, combat, new footage, and more. Um, this is going to be one big look at the game and it's going to be kicking off on may 15th at 6 a.m aest for your local time zones you can work that out because i ain't doing the math for you and we broadcast through playstation's official youtube and twitch channels i do love when things are at 4 a.m yeah i know isn't it great isn't it great? It's like, oh yeah, everyone's like, yeah, we're excited i'm like oh, fuck i'll just start the kettle now and four it's fine <laughs> I guess, but this is really cool. Like the Sony have done something here. PlayStation, um, Xbox didn't manage to do, and that was set expectations. Xbox, this is what you'll be seeing. I'm still mad about oh, oh, Assassin's oh. Creed. That, that's one I forgot to mention earlier. Um, you, for those that are interested in playing them on PC, the Halo Two today. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um. Halo 2 is out on PC as part of the Master Chief collection, correct? Yep, 100%. Released... 
Who and I imagine today? that I'll do much better at that than I did at Halo Reach. Oh no, that was pretty funny. It was rather entertaining. Um, but yeah, so Halo Two on PC. Don't you say to play Friday, May fifteenth. Sharpen your katanas, and maybe a pot or two of coffee if you're up that early. And there you go. It's going to be eight PM GMT and four PM EST. Thank you, Jax. You're a lifesaver. I love you. But that is it. It's the final news story of the night. So, Stormy, thank you so much for coming on and saving the show this week. Um, I know it was kind of last minute, and you were like, yep, yeah, okay, cool. But thank you for coming along. It's been fun. Where can the good people listening find you? On the um, internet, not specifically your address. That would be weird. I'm happy to share my address. <laughs> I, I'm not one of those funny people that thinks everything should be hidden. Uh, if someone wants to identity theft, be good luck. Um, no, uh, I'm available on Twitter at Stormy Online. Little one word. I'm on Mixer at mixer.com/stormy, which is S-T-O-R-M-I-E, not Y, like porn star. Um, Are you sure? I've been spelling yeah, it wrong. Yeah, very sure. Uh, I I also occasionally write uh, articles for Explorminate, which is a website um, dedicated to forex gaming. So you can ca- occasionally catch some of the stuff I write on there. But you'd see links to that on on my Twitter. So just just go into Twitter. Cool. So you're telling me you have Stormy, not like the porn star, spelt differently, and you write for four X games, not three X games. I'm yes, sensing a exactly. theme here. Not quite a porn star. <laughs> I'm deaf more puppies. More star. More. Just a bit more. more. Than a porn star. One, one more extra, X. One, one more X and one extra, let, one extra letter, if you're counting the numbers. I'm deaf puppies. You can find me on Twitter and Mixer at deft underscore poppies. If you would like to get in contact with the podcast, you can find us at left underscore pub pod pub well i've got beers on the brain um also you can find us on youtube links will be in the description because it's way too long to even think about reading out we'll fix that eventually um to catch the replay of the show if you missed the live cast and you like a little bit of visual with your audio um you can find us here 9 p.m aest every tuesday night when gray isn't sick on mixer at mixer.com forward slash deft underscore puppies ladies and gentlemen Thank you so much for stopping by and listening. Have a fantastic week, Stormy. Again, thank you for coming in and rescuing. Much appreciated. No I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Gray's uh, much more pleasure. I'm surprised. Uh, cool tone. We'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have a fantastic week. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you later. Bye.